What's up guys? This episode of Lifting Motors is gonna be a little bit different today. This is actually a loaner car. My R8 is getting an oil change and this is what they gave me to drive. In the meantime, this is a brand new 2019 Audi A7. And the reason why I wanna make a quick review video of this before I give it back to them is the interior of this car is just so damn sick. I've seen pictures, I've seen videos of it, but now that I've experienced it firsthand, in my opinion, this could be the coolest interior of any car out there right now. I would say the new G-Wagon that has the twin screens and probably the new Rolls-Royce Cullinan, those three would be my top three. Comment down below what you think the top three interiors are right now in the car game. I'm really interested to see what you think. Let's dive into this a little bit more and I'll show you how cool this really is. Before we go over the electronics, let's just go over the aesthetics and comfort of this car. First impression when you sit down, these seats are extremely comfortable. It's really nice leather, the, the material, the foam they used on the inside. When you're leaning, it is just really comfortable on your back and on your shoulder. And uh, that's something that I like a lot about it. Overall, it's just an extremely comfortable car. Back seat has three seats, it holds five total. This is a great family car. Um, I like how pretty much everything in here is already black with the white stitching contour. You got some of this wood grain on here as well. Uh, you have a moonroof. I'm not a huge moonroof fan, but it does look nice on this if you're a person that likes moonroofs. Everything they did here is just really streamlined and they, they did a great job with the design and I think that it looks really sharp to the eye. We're gonna go ahead and turn the car on here, just the battery. So you can see these screens fire up. Hear the nice little welcome sound there. That's nice and pleasant. I don't know if you can turn that off if you like it, if you don't like it. Um, behind the screen, this is Audi's uh, cockpit display. The map here is so incredible. You don't have to take your eyes off the road when you're following your GPS. You still have your gauges. You can switch between your views. This is how it is on my R8 as well. And then you can switch between whatever information you want to display there. And you can always choose if you want that to be the main focus or the gauges themselves. We'll go to the home screen here. You can swipe over here. You got news, weather. You can do your text messages and emails. Um, your phone, that's pretty typical. This is pretty cool if you get into the vehicle. You can set up all your user settings there. Um, if you wanna go to your, let's see, settings. This is where you can really just customize everything the way you like it and it'll remember it based on which key it's programmed to. I will say for it's it's nice, it's sleek, it's black, it's small, but this key could be a little bit cooler compared to how technology savvy this this car is. You can have the map view on both screens here at the same time and if you want just like on your phone to zoom in and zoom back out or move around the map, you can just use your hand like that and it's a Google map. But you can have it on both screens at the same time. You have no excuse for getting lost in this car with both of these maps. This lower screen here is mostly gonna be what controls your, uh, your climate control, your seats, it has heated seats, air conditioned seats. You can turn the auto start off and on. That means you come to a stop at a stoplight, the engine shuts down and then starts again when you start to take off. I hate that feature. I know some people like it, but I can't stand it. So I always turn that off. The other way that you can turn that off really quickly is by turning in the sport, by pulling it back. Um, the other thing that I'll do to turn that off, I'll just turn the traction control off. And that'll also turn the lane um, uh, departure warning off. It's right below the speedometer, but it shows like a little visual of the car and then the lanes on either side. If you're texting, which you shouldn't be doing anyways, or you're sleepy or whatever, or you just drift, you weren't paying attention, that is a great safety feature. But just for everyday driving and you are paying attention, being a responsible driver, it is a little bit annoying because it constantly kind of grabs and pulls you over if you don't use your signal every single time. I don't like using my signals every single time I change lanes. This here enables you to actually raise and then lower the, uh, if I press it, it'll say press and hold down to retract the real rear spoiler manually. So I can hold that down and it's gonna bring the spoiler back down. Uh, this here you can save different destinations and then you just hit it and it'll take you straight. There's no home address in there yet. Um, this is the lane departure warning. I can turn that off, which I really like. So I pretty much just ride with those off at all times. 
This is something that's cool. I haven't seen it this style. This is your garage here. There's none programmed to it, but you can just press this button on your screen and it'll open your garage. There's four different types of drive modes. You have your comfort, your auto, dynamic, and individual. Individual is what I was talking about earlier when you're in the settings. You can actually go in and choose how you want the car to perform, the comfort, suspension. Um, I, didn't, I haven't explored that too much, so I don't know how similar it was to my RS7. Now my RS7 was a previous generation. They have not come out with the RS7 for this new generation yet. So when I'm looking at this car, it's not really a fair comparison on the outside, um, like how visually it looks or how aggressive it looks or even the engine or anything like that, because this is their base model. This is an incredibly nice base model, but to compare the RS7, which is their top of the line performance, it has everything on it, compared to this, that's not really a fair comparison. So to compare Apple, apples to apples, we would have to compare the new RS7, which I'm not sure when it comes out yet, but I'm excited to see it. I know it's gonna be super sick. Here you have, this is so sick. This, you can see we're inside my gym in our warehouse right now, but uh, the passenger door is open right now, so it's gonna block that out. But you can see an overhead view, and then you can see a front, or uh, to the side, you can pick all these different angles of where you want the camera to show. From behind, on top. I mean, it's so insane what this thing can do. And now watch this. This is the craziest one. It shows an actual 3D render of your vehicle where you are. The way that they're able to just create that image and I backed up with it and it moves and it tracks everything around you. It does go blurry a little bit, like kind of like warps the screen with the other cars around you, but your car stays fixed and it's a really cool feature. Even though it looks complicated, their system is actually really user friendly. With just a little bit of practice, everything is sorted and, and uh, categorized so well that I feel like really anybody with just a little bit of practice, just a little bit of playing with it can get used to it and they'll end up falling in love with it because once you get it down, it's so simple and so effective of everything you wanna do that that's why I think this probably is the best electronic system in any car right now. It's my favorite, I have to say that. Gear shift on here is really easy to use. You just pull back um, to go into drive, push forward, neutral to reverse. The park button is just right here. You just push it with your thumb and it'll go into park. There's a parking brake right next to it. You can pull up. Um, inside here, you have an SD slot, two USBs. You can see I'm already using that, but actually, which is a sick feature, is the wireless charging. You just sit it right there and it starts charging just like that. And by having your phone in there and then integrating everything with the screens here and especially with the screen that's right below your direct line of sight, it's just a lot safer way of doing it than actually using your phone in your hand. They did an awesome job with that. When you open the door, you'll see the Audi rings illuminated on the ground like that. It's pretty bright in the warehouse right now, but at night that pops so much and it looks really cool on the ground. You can also see the illuminated S-Line badging there because this has the S-Line package that looks nice. Something else I wanna show you real quick, when you turn the car on, like again, it's based on the memory key, wherever you like your seat and steering wheel positioned, it automatically brings it into position and remembers based on the driver's settings. The other thing that's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to shut the door and it'll pick up on my mic. When I turn the car off, if you leave your phone in here because it's not, it's the wireless charging and you can easily forget, it's gonna remind me that my mobile device is still in the vehicle. Your mobile device is still in the vehicle. Thank you, I appreciate that. Let's go over the outside of the car really fast. You're gonna see that it's pretty dirty. It's been raining all weekend and I've been driving it, so there's a lot of dirt on the front and everything. Uh, but look past that. Something that Audi did with these new headlights. Now, again, I'm not an expert, but from what I've read and the videos I've watched, supposedly the technology they have in these headlights now are not even legal in the US yet, so they're not able to be utilized. It's just in a regular setting. But once that that gets passed and they get the okay on it, it has all these different individual lights in here. And it has these sensors that pick up where the external light is coming from and it's able to turn on and off certain lights so that way it can wrap the light so it's not blinding the oncoming driver or however, whatever it's picking up, if it's wanting to wrap the light around it and pick exactly where it's wanting the light to go. That's a crazy system. 
I'm excited for that to get uh, changed so that way they can actually start utilizing that and I can see that in action. Um, you'll see on the hood something that is different now. You can see the lines, the hood slants a little bit more, the bolsters in the hood. You see the giant sensors out here. That's your adaptive cruise control. That's the assisted driving that I showed you. And then the cameras are what we showed you for parking and the overhead and all that kind of stuff. Let's look at the engine on here real fast. This is their base model engine. So this is a three, three liter turbo V6. Produces about 335 horsepower and 370 pounds of torque. It does 0 to 60, I think they put on there in about 5.2 seconds. It's pretty quick and it's really smooth. So I think the person that's buying this car is not looking for some crazy high performance model, but what's really awesome is with the technology of today's engines and the turbo and everything that they're doing with these cars and the way they tune them, it's still quick. It's still gonna be something that you can change lanes. If you need to speed up real fast, like it's responsive, but it's still very, very smooth. And for someone who's not wanting some crazy high performance, it's not gonna feel jerky or like it's too much for them. Let's move back on the car. You see the S-Line badge here because it has the S-Line package on it. This has the chrome outlay on it. And on this blue, that actually looks really nice. Uh, if it had a black wheel on it, I would want that to be black or if it was a black car. But since it's this blue color with this chrome, if you had a chrome wheel on here, I think that would look really clean. And I'm not usually a chrome wheels kind of a guy, but that actually would look really nice on this car. I'm going to show you this is the hatchback and I actually have my golf clubs in here to give you a um, relative view of how big this trunk really is. My golf bag, this is a full size bag, it's not a staff bag but it's a full size bag, fits in there perfectly, has plenty of room, you could fit another bag in there if you needed to. So. Like I said, when we were inside, it's a five-seater car, great family car, and you still have plenty of room for luggage. So this is actually a really comfortable road trip car to take. Now, I'd rather take my truck because it's a lot bigger on the inside for a road trip, but this is going to get a little bit of gas mileage, and a lot of people probably prefer this. We'll show you some B-roll shots of this, but when I was pressing the button on the inside for the rear spoiler and I could move it up and down manually, that's where this comes out right here. Um, overall, exterior of this car looks really sharp. It's already got a bunch of compliments just when I've been driving it the last couple days on my Audis in the shop. Um, they killed it. Oh, one last thing. I want to show you this before I forget. The uh, back tail light now, I know that's going to be a tough camera angle for you. I'll wait for you to get over here. But the back tail light now goes all the way across. And that's something that's really popular in the car industry right now. You're seeing that on a lot of cars. They're bringing the back tail light all the way across instead of just being on the corners. Um, it's a lot brighter, lights up. You're gonna see the car, you're gonna see those lights come on, that's for sure. I think it's cool at night, but to me, like so many people are doing it and they're so obsessed with it. I don't see what the obsession's all about. Yeah, it looks nice, but it's just a light. <laughs> uh, overall, I just wanna say that visually, I think this car looks a lot like a Jaguar XF. I used to have an XF, it was like a 2011 or 12. And the side profile is because it's slanted and the way that the front slants as well, it reminds me a lot of that car. And actually I pulled up to play golf yesterday and a guy next to me said, hey, is that the new A7? That looks just like the old Jaguar XF. So that was a really sharp uh, car. I love that car. So that's a good compliment to get. Again, the S7 and the RS7 are not out yet. I don't know when those are supposed to be out. I'm gonna look that up, but I'm excited to see when those come out. I'm sure the performance numbers on those are going to be crazy because the last generation was already nuts. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, thumbs up. Comment down below what you think of the new changes on this car. And again, like I said earlier, I wanna see what you think the top three interiors are in the car game right now. Um, yeah, that's it. That wraps another episode of Lifted Motors. I appreciate you guys, and we'll see you in the next episode.